Today's announcement by the Prime Minister for immediate action in the issue of veterans' suicide is no doubt great relief to Julianne Finney, who lost her son to suicide and has been campaigning for change ever since. She had this to say this morning. I did a late night trip to the cemetery last night. Um, I told my son that he matters and that I'm incredibly proud of him. I'm so proud to be his mother and that he matters. And I know that I'm, I'm not the only mother feeling that way, but I needed to tell him. I needed to tell him that, that he matters. And I'm, I'm just so very proud of him and, and, and I love him. Well, Julianne's been a magnificent warrior for her son, much in the same way these soldiers have fought for us. And someone who's really taken up the issue himself as a bit of a personal campaign too, is the editor of the Daily Telegraph, Ben English. Ben joins me now. Ben, look, this is a really tough issue. It's one where some of us find difficult to read and we turn over the page, but you have, as a newspaper group, campaigned day in, day out and kept up the momentum for change. How do you feel about today's announcement? Yeah, um, very, very good. Um, I feel really great for actually Julianne and, and the other mothers. I, I think that's just the, I mean, she just said um, how proud she was of him. How proud would he be of her and her, her battle that she's waged? Uh, he died a year ago, just over a few days ago, uh, February 1. And uh, for this to happen in the same week is quite poignant and I think just an outstanding vindication of what she's done. And it's the very reason why we launched this campaign back in June and uh, we haven't given up. And, I must say there was a lot of resistance and you'd probably be aware of that yourself, Peter, that yeah. uh, there's endemic resistance within uh, both Defence and DVA to this sort of scrutiny, this sort of accountability and it's long overdue and it's, um, it's really quite shameful that we've had more than 400 uh, soldiers who, or ex-soldiers who've taken their own lives since 2001. Yeah, look, I think I made the point in my introduction to put it into some context. Inside the military, when you wear the uniform, the rates for male suicide are lower than the community mm. averages. But outside the uniform, when they're veterans, uh, they are 18, age adjusted, 18% higher. Now, uh, one of the concerns I think today by some initially was, well, this is not a Royal Commission. Somehow we've got something less than what we are asking for. Now, I say this as someone who's worked inside the organ of government for a long time. This is way better than a Royal Commission, which has a shelf life and then a report that sits on the shelf. This is actually a, almost like a living Royal Commission in the sense that it has all the powers of a Royal Commission. It's independent of the big bureaucracies and its job is to be a watchdog on the issue of suicide, previous ones, but ongoing. What's been your reaction to the detail announced by the PM? Uh, my reaction is exactly the same as yours. It's, uh, it's far better than a Royal Commission. A Royal, Royal Commission is looking at a rear vision mirror at a point in time. This, as you say, will ensure um, unprecedented accountability for both those departments and for the people within them. And it will also ensure through the family advocate uh, that, the, as you said, the, the, the difficulty in navigating this landscape once you've, once you've left uh, the comfort or, or the folds of, of defence is, uh, is that much easier. So I think it's an outstanding uh, solution and I have to say I believe it's a result of Scott Morrison actually meeting those mothers and listening to their, their, um, their stories firsthand. Um, that's what he told me and I, I think that's, that's spot on. He actually attended our summit that we, uh, that we had last year and it was there that he met them and, and I think he was, um, he was very moved by that occasion. Yeah, I do think much is made of his uh, Christian uh, faith, but I think he becomes very pastoral in circumstances like this and certainly meeting with people who have been, you know, first-hand affected by the issue of suicide. Broadly, I mean, you had a huge community campaign, 300,000 signatures signed the petition. What's been the response of readers? What's been the response of the other parents involved in the campaign? Absolutely delighted. Um, and, in fact, it's been universal. I mean, the Labor's... Uh, got behind it. I, I don't think they had any choice in that matter, but uh, certainly a lot of other veterans groups, the RSL, um, and must be said some of these groups weren't necessarily so supportive of a Royal Commission. Um, they have, once they've read uh, more detail about this, they are universally behind it. Uh, within our newsroom, um, you know, there is um, quite elation that um, we've, we've fought this battle and, and had a victory and had a victory for um, for soldiers who, I mean, when 
everyone knows that on the battlefield, um, soldiers don't desert their own. Um, they, they will pick up the wounded and, and, and take them to safety where possible, um, even risking quite often their own lives. Um, why don't we do, have the same attitude within defence and DVA for those soldiers who have got a new battlefield after they leave, uh, after they end their careers within the army or within the defence force? Yeah, and I take the, the remark you made there, but I want to underscore what I think is one of the problems. When they're in the army and the, the defence department does everything for them, Mm. Uh, finds them the home, organises their transport, gives them a kit to wear, does their training for them, pays their wage. It's more than just a career, it is a life. Mm. And then they leave uh, defence and they go through all the sort of uh, separation issues that you have when you leave an organisation that's such an integral part of your life. And they get shunted off to basically a welfare organisation, which mm. is what the Department of Veterans Affairs is. I think yeah. one of the problems is that defence will send them off to war but it won't own them when they come back and I think they need to be I think they need veterans to be owned by defence as much as recruits and current serving men and women do need to be and I also think that there's a there's just this uh, mushrooming of bodies uh, particularly in this area whenever there's a problem you start something else up you open up a new body they need a bit of a housekeeping exercise to remove all these additional bodies now and focus all their attentions into this independent commissioner and make it a success so I hope you don't drop the campaign I hope you pursue right. the government on the implementation detail of this as well I, I think also the other thing is I think America does this a lot better I think America Veterans are, are honoured. They're, they're, um, they're honoured wherever they go. They get for, they're, they're the first onto a plane. Um, they're also still invited onto garrisons. Um, uh, you know, they can still go to the gyms. They still play on the teams. And I think we should have a better alma mater uh, culture here so that um, they don't leave... Uh, they're not then enfeebled and, and treated like uh, you know, invalids when they leave, as you say. They're still, uh, they still should be honoured for the service that they have given. So is there a, a possibility that we can still uh, provide access um, to some of those um, services and facilities within uh, defence? I think that's something that needs to be examined so they don't feel like they're cast out. Yeah, I think these are all very smart suggestions. I mean, some of them are part of the American patriotic tradition. They may not necessarily be something our servicemen and women are comfortable with, but I think True. we've got to have the conversation. We've got to do something about this uh, rate of suicide. Well, all mm. credit to you, Ben, and all credit to your newsroom and the other papers that joined in this campaign. And uh, as I said, keep up the scrutiny on the implementation as well. Thanks for your time tonight. Thanks very much.